Look, uh, medicine, we are always keen to hear about breakthroughs from cancer treatment to help with conception. Let's get the lowdown on the breakthroughs expected in 2012. Yeah, here to help us look ahead is General Practitioner Cindy Pan. Hi, Cindy. Hi, uh, Let's chat uh, vaccines. We'll kick off with that. What can we expect to see in the new year when it comes to vaccines? Well, the pharmaceutical advisory body has been uh, recommending that Gardasil, that vaccine that has been recommended for the young women for uh, preventing HPV, um, is going to be recommended for boys boys as well. So that'll be great because um, HPV can cause both um, genital warts and cervical cancer. But of course by um, decreasing the presence of the infection in boys, um, you know, obviously it's, it's transmitted via sexual contact, that'll decrease the risk to women as well, as well as to boys, because um, HPV can be associated with other kind of anagenital cancers. And so. this is the one that teenage girls get for free, don't they? Yeah, right. yeah. They'll extend that to include boys yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, boys can get it now if they want to, but parents would have to pay ask, for it. Oh, okay, yeah, for so it. that'll be good. You know, there are some positives uh, we can draw from the use of smartphones and their applications in medicine, right? Yeah, well, I mean, the whole of e-technology and, and all these technologies are really beneficial. Like, say, for example, for a while now, your cardiologist can receive your most recent ECG on his, um, you know, BlackBerry or iPhone or stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And um, there's a growing kind of use of email to sort of transmit, say, referral letters and correspondence back from specialists and things like this. Yeah. But even things like Skype, um, I've known of patients who are being seen by, say, a psychiatrist in England, and when they return to Australia, they can be followed up via Skype. Right. And I think, okay. you know, there's a very variable uptake amongst different doctors of, of all these things. The other thing is um, the use of... Um, kind of a central database of information about patients. So say for example, if your grandmother gets admitted to hospital when she's in Sydney and maybe she's from, you know, Toowoomba or something like yep. that, that the doctors in Sydney can access her medical records and know all the medication she's on and all that kind of mm. thing. So mm. there's obviously um, a whole lot of uses for yes, e-technology. Uh, how's Australia's future looking when it comes to obesity, Cindy? Well, of course, I think there's growing awareness and use of lap banding and gastric banding and things like that to deal with morbid obesity. Because as we all know, you know, we know about exercise, we know about diet, but for people who are morbidly obese, sometimes it can be really, really difficult to lose weight. And lap banding can sometimes give that dramatic weight loss. But I think there's more and more growing awareness that, you know, obviously there are complications and there are limitations as well, because you still have to kind of adhere to certain particular eating um, regimens, when yes. even if you've got the lap band. So just having a lap band alone is not going to do it for you still have to have all those other lifestyle mm -hmm. measures. What about uh, baby production? <laughs> Will we see develop? It sounds very, doesn't make it sound nice. Mm. <laughs> what, what about babies? Well, of course, you know, with, um, you know, women tending to have their babies later and all this sort of mm. thing, I think, of course, a, a lot of people are aware of IVF and all the successes there. And I think we've, we've been comfortable for a while, I think, with the idea of sperm donation. But mm -hmm. I think now that um, sperm donation is no longer kind of an anonymous thing, um, the babies will be able to, in the future, identify um, you know, the donor. Uh, there's been some changes there. And then, of course, um, especially with celebrities, you know, using egg donors, that, that's becoming more of a well-known thing. But I think the, um, the other thing is embryo donation, because often, say, if people go for IVF, they'll often have, uh, a, you know, several embryos frozen, but they don't necessarily use all of them. And at mm. a certain point when they decide they've, they've finished them, they've completed their family, there's the dilemma of what's to become of those frozen embryos that are left behind, which, you know, are, are perfectly good to go type of thing. And um, I guess the thing is that, say, other people who want either, that, who aren't able to procure the eggs or the sperm, they would love to, you know, have access right. to those embryos. So this issue of embryo donation and all the kind of moral and ethical dilemmas around that, I think that's mm. um, something that we're going to be discussing mm. and evolving those concepts as, as, yeah, um, yeah, as time goes by. Mm. And, and just finally, Cindy, what about just uh, generally when it comes to prolonging health? Is there anything that looming in 2012 that we can... Well, I think there's um, more and more... Um, I mean, obviously, we can all live longer, you know, because the biggest killer is still cardiovascular disease. And by, you know, decreasing our risk factors and managing cardiovascular disease when it occurs, we can lengthen our lives. And then, of course, with cancer, that's the other um, big um, cause of uh, demise. Uh, you know, there are new ways of detecting it, treating it, and all that kind of thing. So we can prolong life in terms of quantity, but then there's the issue of quality. Because there's no point being 100 if you've been demented for the last 10 years. It's not, mm. That's not considered mm. something we aspire to. Mm. So I think the big area where there's going to be advances is dementia. We already do have medications that are suitable for some stages and some types of dementia, but I think there's going to be further advances okay. there. But as well, just growing awareness that um, the brain is, is like a muscle. We're 
all aware of you know being physically active but keeping the brain active um, both mm. through you know not just mm. crosswords but you know playing bridge but really any kind of social pursuit okay. but obviously reading and yeah here's my medical prediction for next oh, year okay. oh, gonna, oh, this will be good that we're <laughs> going to see a lot more of those things where they say we're still researching it we'll know in 10 years time <laughs> you're going to see a lot more of those next year yeah no. don't you reckon <laughs> all we always see those things and we never we should follow them up. If we're here in 10 years' time, <laughs> remember to follow the stuff up from last year. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks. Happy it's a pleasure. New year. Thanks, Bye, Cindy. Cindy.